Hi everyone, the seventh edition of APA Style specifies two different ways to set up your paper, one for students and one for professionals. This video will walk you through how to set up a paper for students. So this is ideal for assignments for a class, whether you are in high school, college, or even graduate school. But if you are writing a paper that you plan to submit for publication in a journal, now in this video, I will demonstrate everything using Microsoft Word on a Windows computer. If you are using Word for Mac, an older version of Word, or a different word processing program entirely, like Google Docs, your paper should still look the same way, but the menu options you select to make that happen might be in a different spot. Additionally, in order to get the most use out of this video, I recommend pausing the video as needed to complete the steps yourself. Now the very first thing I recommend doing is to enable the formatting symbols. These are normally invisible, but I find them to be extremely useful when writing and formatting papers because they show every keystroke that you make. To do that, click on the paragraph symbol, which is the show hide formatting marks button. Now, whenever you press enter, tab, or space, symbols for each will appear. These symbols are not printed, so you do not need to worry about a bunch of extra stuff appearing on what you do submit. It might take you a little bit of time to get used to seeing them, but once you do, you won't ever turn them off. Now to actually get to APA style, the first step is to ensure that your page margins are set up correctly. APA style specifies one inch page margins on all sides. This is the default option nowadays, but older versions of Word and other word processing programs may have different margins. To double check, go to Layout, Margins, and then see what is selected. As you can see, Normal is the default option, one inch on all sides. If you need to change your margins, you can pick one of the presets or just go to Custom Margins, and you can then go ahead and change top, left, bottom, right to one inch each. Next, we should set our font. APA style specifies several potential options, including Calibri size 11, Arial size 11, Times New Roman size 12, Georgia size 11, and a few others. I tend to prefer Times New Roman, so that's what I will set it to. Additionally, virtually the entire paper will be double spaced, so let's set that as well by changing our line and paragraph spacing to two. Finally, unless specified, all text should be left aligned, which is typically the default. Do not justify the text, keep it left aligned. Once the basics are taken care of, the first major part of your paper is the title page. So the first thing to do here then is create your title. To do that, you'll want to press enter three or four times, center the text, write your title, and put the title in bold. You want to write it in title case, meaning that all important words start with a capital letter. Do not use any abbreviations in the title. And if you have a longer title or a subtitle, you can split it onto the next line as I am doing here. A few notes on creating titles. The title should describe what the paper is about, so you need to convey the main ideas clearly. Oftentimes, this means incorporating the names of the variables that you studied or are exploring. And you also want the title to be descriptive without being needlessly long. So you want the title to strike a balance between being concise and being thorough. There is no word limit on how long a title should be. So again, you need to write one that best reflects your paper. Your title's length will ultimately depend on what your paper is about and what you are trying to convey. Next, we need to state who wrote the paper. So unbold your text, press enter twice to put a blank line or space between the title and author byline, and write your name. You should include your first name, middle initial, and last name. If there are multiple authors, separate each person with a comma and then write out and before the final author. Do not include any titles or degrees that you may have or certifications, just write your name. And it's okay for author names to go onto a second or third line if you have a bunch of authors or longer names. Now, once the author is written, you need to state your affiliation. As students, your affiliation will be your department and university separated with a comma. If you are in high school, you might not have a department, so you would just put down your school name. 
The next elements of a title page for student papers are for the class itself. So after the author affiliation byline, on the next line, state the course number and course title. And you want the number and title to match however the school or instructor has it listed. On the next line, write the course instructor's name. How you write it out depends on your instructor, so if you are unsure, just ask the person. If you are in college or graduate school and your instructor has a doctoral degree, you can start with doctor and then write out their last name or put PhD after their full name. Or you could probably just put professor in front of their name and that would work too. If you are in high school, your instructor probably doesn't have a doctoral degree, so you could put Ms. or Mrs. or Mr. in front of their name. The line after that should state the assignment's due date. Write out the due date based on how your country does it. So if you put the day before the month, you would do that here instead of how I have it set up. Now the last major element of the title page for student papers is the page number. You can insert the page number by going to insert, page number, top of page, plain number three, which sets the page number in the top right corner of the header. So once you've done that, the title page is finished. That's all you need. The next section is the longest section, the main text of your work or the actual body of your paper. As a quick note, you do not need to write an abstract for student papers. Now you should begin the main text, the page after the title page, so on page two. And at the start of the second page, you will repeat your title exactly as it is written on the title page. So it's just easy to go up, copy it, and hit paste. You do not need to write out the word introduction as it is generally assumed that's what the first part of your paper is. And as a reminder, the text of your paper should be double spaced and you should always indent when starting a new paragraph. Your text should be left aligned and you should avoid any blank lines or extra spaces between paragraphs. Now, when it comes to writing, you should always use one space after a punctuation mark, including periods. So at the end of a sentence, just hit the space bar once. And this is one reason why making the formatting symbols visible is useful. You can easily see if you have any extra spaces or extra lines. The only exception to that rule is for abbreviations like EG or AM. You should also use the active voice instead of the passive voice whenever possible along with the Oxford comma, but avoid using contractions, colloquialisms, or excessive amounts of jargon. When it comes to numbers, you should always use words to write out any numbers smaller than 10, common fractions like one half, or if the sentence starts with a number. Otherwise, use numerals. You should also always use numerals with units of measurement, dollar amounts, dates, and so on, even if they are smaller than 10. The other thing you should strongly consider using are concise section headings. These are extremely important for organizing your paper because they divide your work into cohesive parts. They are a great way to draw attention to key points, inform readers of what is coming next, and make looking for information easy. Section headings are also very useful for outlining your paper ahead of time. APA style specifies five levels of section headings, and I'm gonna copy paste some placeholder text here and show you what it all will look like. Level one headings are the highest level, and they denote the start of major new sections. Level two headings are one level lower and are used to split a major section into subsections, with levels three, four, and five used to create more specific subsections and sub subsections. Now the last few things to talk about here are the end matter. This encompasses several sections, some of which you may not need to include. The one section that you will almost always have is a reference list. The reference list starts on the next page after the main text is finished. You'll start by writing references at the top in bold and centered, and then writing out your references. Other examples of end matter include footnotes, tables, figures, and appendices. As students, you probably won't need any of them, depending on the type of paper you're writing. 
So in closing, in this video, we went through how to properly set up an APA style paper for students, which included setting margins and picking a font, creating a title page with author and course information, inserting a page number, organizing the main text with section headings, and how to format pages for references, footnotes, tables, figures, and appendices.